here is a wise virgin. From among the number of the prudent, who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate this memorial of St. Clair. St. Clair means the light. And she was someone that lived this beautiful call of consecrated virginity of becoming the foundress with St. Francis of Assisi of the Four Clairs. And their spirituality is all centered about, around focusing on the face of Christ hidden in the Eucharist. And she would write to one of her sisters, Blessed Agnes of Prague, this is in the Office of Readings today, um, and says, use Jesus Christ as your mirror. Allow Jesus Christ to show you who you are. And the more that we look at Christ, the more that we start more and more to be shaped into his very, very heart. And so allow yourself to have the mirror of Christ always in front of you. That's actually what Vatican II would teach us in Gaudium and Spes, and St. John Paul II would use that as um, a, a teaching point throughout his entire pontificate, that the mystery of man is fully realized and fully made known in the light of the mystery of Christ. We can't know ourselves. This is what we call Christian anthropology. So understanding what it means to be a human person, we can't do it if we just look at other human persons that have fallen, that are warped, that are broken, like all of us as though original sin is something natural to our condition, but Christ, we look at him, and we start realizing who we were made to be and what our original nature is called to be, free from sin, glorified and united to the very body of Christ. St. Clair is someone who really lived this out, and she did it through focusing on the Eucharist, and particularly Eucharistic adoration. So allow Eucharistic adoration to really become more and more part of the, the, the center of your life, especially during this time of coronavirus, in which a lot of that has been shaken. A lot of that, even just with our own Eucharistic adoration chapel, not being able to be open right now and having very limited amounts of holy hours. But use those times wisely. Be able to come together as God's people and allow the Eucharist to shape soul as you gaze upon the hidden face of glory. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your mercy led St. Clair to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God said to me, As for you, son of man, um, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then that I saw a hand stretched out to me, in which was a written scroll which he unrolled for me. It was covered with writing, front and back, and written on it, was lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then 
go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he then said to me, Feed your belly and fill your stomach. With this scroll I am giving you. I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel, and speak my words to them. The word of the Lord. My taste is your promise. How sweet to my ears is your promise. In the way of your decrees, I rejoice, as much as in all riches. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. How sweet to my ears is your promise. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet to my ears is your promise. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet to my ears is your promise. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. The joy of my heart they are. How sweet to my ears I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. How sweet to my ears is your promise. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen I say to you, he rejoices more over it, than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we have this theme of sweetness of taste of the promise of God, good news. We have the scroll, the very word of God that the prophet Ezekiel is called to eat. What a beautiful image, even of the Eucharist, and of what we're supposed to do with Scripture, because in Mass, we have these two tables, and this first table that we just fed from, we're supposed to Eat that word. We're supposed to allow it to sink into our pores, to just like how food just comes in and assimilates into us, we need to allow that word of God, which if you remember in scripture it says, my word goes forth and will not come back to me empty, but will 
go and do what it was made to do. And so it goes out. And if our heart is open, if we accept in faith that word coming into us, then we become more and more shaped by the word. It's, it's that, that image of St. Clair and the mirror, the very word of God, Jesus Christ, coming to us first in his spoken word, that's supposed to come in and, and stir the soil, to shake the soil, and then he comes in a way in which we consume the word of God in sacrament. Word and in sacrament. And as we do that, we become more and more like him. It's the reverse of how when we eat, if we eat something, it becomes us. When we eat Lord, when we allow the Word and the Word to come into us, it changes us, not we change it. Today the Lord gives us also this idea of taste, the sweetness. And he gives us this image of being a child, childlike, not childish. And there's a difference there. Someone who is childish wants to stay a kid. Remember that song, I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid? No kid wants to just stay a kid. If you ever ask little ones, they always use like, I'm three and a half. Or I'm three and seven-eighths. Or, you know, I mean, they're, they're always trying to be older than they are. None of them, you don't have like a three-year-old being like, hi, I'm one. They're like, no, I'm, I'm three and a half. I'm, I'm almost four. A child doesn't want to stay a child. Doesn't want to stay immature. They want to grow up. And... In doing that, that's where their, their beauty is, is that they don't want to just settle for the, 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 the childish pleasures of life. Even though they don't realize it, because maybe they haven't experienced anything more, but there's this desire in there, there's this hunger in them to become older, to grow up. That's the great tragedy of Peter Pan. If you read the, the actual story of Peter Pan, it's really a tragedy might not realize this because we look at the Disney version of it, but the original one by J.M. Barry is this, uh, this idea of Peter Pan doesn't want to grow up. He wants to remain childish forever. He wants to live in Never Never Land. And Wendy is someone who recognizes, yes, that was fun, but I need to grow up. And Peter, you can come you can grow up too. But he's like, nope. And what he does is he does something that actually is very... It's actually quite horrible. I'm sorry if you really loved Peter Pan, but maybe the Disney version of Pagan like that. But it, the whole story of Peter Pan is about how Peter Pan tries to have both worlds. He tries to be grown up and childish at the same time. And in doing that, he hurts Wendy. Because Peter says, well, I'm going to have my fun being a kid all the time, never growing up, and I'll come and visit you at different times. But do you remember how Wendy, the next time that she visits, that he visits, it's like years later, and then years later, and then she's an old lady. And there's this way of this kind of taunting of Peter not realizing that he just can't come into a relationship and then leave for 30 years and then come back to the relationship after 30 years and just sort of pop in. And it doesn't matter to him because he's always going to be young. But poor Wendy is like, you're coming into my life and then you're coming out because you just want to be a child and not grow up. And that's actually using someone. 
versus being willing to sacrifice the immaturity to grow up. And the growing up includes a sacrifice. It includes dying to a certain part of us. But in order to die to that part, then we actually can live much more deeper. And that's what the Lord is talking about here, this, this sweet taste in the promise of the Lord. We can stay with Christianity at a very surface level. We can stay at a very childish level. Or we can truly be like a child and want to grow, want to delve deeper and deeper. Because as we do that, as we grow up in the Spirit, then we start recognizing that by saying no to certain things, we're able to say yes more deeply to the things that really matter. I mean, a, a beautiful instance you could find in the whole um, relationships with dating and romance that, and ultimately leading to marriage. Someone, and, and we see this in our world, we have adults who haven't really grown up. And if you look at a lot of sitcoms, if you look at, you know, I mean, that weird show, was it Two and a Half Men or whatever? I mean, you have these adults that are like in their, I don't know, 40s or 50s or whatever, but they're acting like they're 16-year-olds, and they don't really know how to grow up. And it's this kind of idea of not committing, not saying, I say no to, let's say, for, for a guy. One guy could say, well, I'm just going to be in this relationship, and when this one doesn't really... I don't really get any pleasure out of this, then I'll go to another one, another one, and then I'll always have infinite pleasure wherever I go. But in doing that, you never actually grow. You stay Peter Pan in Never Never Land. You're not able to grow deeper, and your soul, in a sense, when it can't grow deeper, it withers, it becomes boring, and it ultimately just grows stale. And so you see, very tragically, these different people growing up within our culture now that maybe have been in that kind of thing, not being able to give themselves fully in a relationship, to be able to sacrifice, to be able to say, I die to myself, and I die to saying yes to every other woman who's here so that I can say yes totally to you forever. In those moments in which there is the thrill and in the moments in which there's that quiet stillness, whether the emotions are there or not, I commit to love, and I choose to love until death do us part. And in our world, we might look at that and say, well, that's not exciting. That's not sweet. Some people say, you know, they kind of joke. Remember, we were talking about this yesterday about comedy, saying that marriage is just enslavement. And yet... It's actually one of the most liberating things when it's in Christ. Because by saying yes, and it's the same with a priestly vocation or religious vocation as well, when we're able to commit and say, I'm willing to sacrifice, then it opens up a whole other horizon for a deeper understanding of love that is not reduced to just pleasure. Because that's merely something, if it's all about feelings, well, then it's very, very subjective, and you go in love, and you go out of love, and you would just be rocked all over the place without any sort of anchor. Versus when we're able to not be Peter Pan and actually grow up, and when we die to immature pleasures, then we're able to grow more deeper. And even those things that, that are good there, then they get lifted up. And they become directed towards serving the other, loving the other, and ultimately becoming more and more what our original nature was meant to be from the beginning. Not driven by concupiscence this way and this way, but this freedom of Adam and Eve in the very, very beginning, being able to say, at last, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, the two becoming one flesh, one reality, one heart, one mind, one soul, one, one organism in a sense. And that can only come 
when the two learn to die to themselves, to get on the cross for one another, and then there's a whole other horizon of love and the sweetness of the Lord, his promise starts to take root within us. So let's not be Peter Pan. Let's not stay in Never Never Land. But in order to be a child, to be humble like a child, we have to learn how to grow up and receive the kingdom of heaven as one child such as this receives it in his name. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Sacrifice in yours 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed St. Clair, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. One thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
by partaking of this divine gift. We pray, O oh Lord our God, that by the example of blessed Saint Clare, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this feast of Saint Clare, some of you remember uh, Claire Halber, who was one of our music directors several years back. On the 22nd, she's going to become a consecrated virgin for the Diocese of Phoenix. So we can pray for her. Um, that same day also, uh, Fernando Rubio will be ordained deacon um, in, uh, in Joliet as well. He'll be a deacon within our parish. So we'll have Deacon Eduardo and Deacon Fernando. So we can pray for, for both of them, these, these moments of giving that, that deep yes, that deep commitment that opens this horizon to love um, in such a powerful way. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast the death of Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we pray for all schools during this time of the fall semester for wisdom and prudence and safety and protection. We pray especially for our school here at St. Mary's. Yeah. Remember, O oh, most gracious the Virgin Mary, Never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided, inspired by this confidence. I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. 